Hello and welcome to Community Conversation, the show that's for and about the people who live in Reading. My name is Kevin Vent, and I'm going to be your host for this episode. In this episode of Community Conversation, we have Bob Hayes, who's the president of the Reading Rotary Club. But up first, we have Alan Folds, who is the Reading Town Moderator. Let's listen in on our conversation with Alan now. Hello, I'm here with Alan Folds, who is the uh, mo town moderator for the town of Reading. Nice to see you today, Alan. Hi, nice to see you, Kevin. So the first question I would have, of course, is what is the town moderator? Town moderator has a few roles. The chief role, of course, is to run the town meeting, okay. the town's legislative body. Kind of the body. chairperson of the, the town. The chairperson, yeah. yeah. It's a little different than, say, a city council president who is actually directing the um, what goes on. The town sure. moderator actually controls debate and gives everybody a fair shot. Okay. Another couple of um, duties I have are appoint appointment authorities. Mm -hmm. The way Reading generally appoints committees is we have a committee to appoint a committee, ah. <laughs> a, an appointing authority. And sure. for the Finance Committee and the Bylaw Committee, and, and I think it's the Rules Committee, I, I am the chairman of that appointing okay. authority. Okay. So, so, but one of the things you do, you so say your primary role is, is kind of running the operation of town meeting. What exactly is town meeting? Town meeting is exactly, it's just like a legislative body. It's just like the, the state legislature on the state level or Congress on the federal level. Hopefully it's, it's better than Congress. <laughs> <laughs> I think it works a lot better. <laughs> it, uh, it's where we enact our local legislation. It's mm -hmm. where we approve our local budget. Every penny that gets spent by the town, it has to be approved by the town meeting. And who makes up town meeting? Where do those people come from? Town meeting, uh, in Reading we have what's called a representative town meeting. Every neighborhood elects representatives to this town meeting. The town is divided into eight precincts, and each precinct gets to elect 24 members. Okay. It's th th uh, three a term, so each year we elect eight of those 24. Okay. So, so the members of town meeting who are representing me are really my neighbors and they're the your, people that live around they're me. They're your friends, they're your neighbors, they might be you. They might be me. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, so um, town meeting is, is tax, tasked with that responsibility of kind of overseeing the expenditures of the town. Any other thing that they, they, they oversee? Laws or rules or, or every bylaw that gets passed, every uh, every major decision, charter changes have to go through town meeting mm -hmm. before it goes to the voters. Bylaws are, are enacted by the town meeting. Okay. As I said, it works just like uh, the state legislature, except so. So, so just <laughs> quickly, what is then the process? I mean, let's say uh, there's a new bylaw to only have candy stores on corners in, in downtown or something like that. What would be the process of that happening? Well, there's a few ways to get that on the warrant. The warrant is more or less the agenda for the okay. meeting. To get something on the warrant, such as your uh, My example. ridiculous bylaw. Yeah, right? yeah your ridiculous <laughs> bylaw. Uh, first of all, the selectmen can put it on directly. Okay. For an annual meeting, any 10 registered voters can also okay. petition to have it put on. For the um, Special meetings, I think it takes 100 people, but it's still okay. relatively, uh, relatively small. Very yeah. sm small number. Then it gets put on the warrant. Uh, then it, it is required to come before a town meeting. Okay. Uh, a warrant article is nothing more than a, like a placeholder. It tells okay. generally what's going to happen. Within okay. that warrant, somebody has to make a motion to mm -hmm. say, I want only red candy stores okay. on or the whatever. corner or whatever. Okay. You really specify exactly as mm -hmm. long as it's within what the original thing told okay. you about. Then uh, it's seconded, of course, and then usually the proponent makes a, the proposal, tells mm -hmm. town meeting Gives why. Gives a little speech as to why they think it's a good idea. Right. Why? It's, then after that, it's opened up to the uh, town meeting members to discuss, and everybody gets um, their say. Sure. So let's taking our, our idea of the, the red candy stores on every corner in downtown. That let's say I get ten of my friends to sign up for that. We get it on the warrant for the annual town meeting. I make the proposal um, to to the town meeting. Uh, do, do the other boards or committees weigh in on that idea if they think it's a good idea, or is it just kind of openly debated? Well, in this case, that would be a bylaw change, so the bylaw committee would have to review it. Okay. They don't give a thumbs up or thumbs down. They, they give their recommendation to town okay. meeting. Okay. So the bylaw committee, the, the, would the selectmen give their say? or, or The selectmen may give their okay. say. They don't on have to. monetary articles, the finance committee also has okay. to have okay. their say on it. Okay. And then... Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. Selectmen okay. are not required to school items, of course. The school committee school has committee, to, to yeah. weigh in as well. Yes. Right. So we would look for a, a, uh, a vote from the selectmen or school committee or whomever, kind of um, giving their opinion, but not necessarily offering anything else beyond that. Right. Town right. meeting has the final say. Ta so town meeting can go against the opinion of the selectmen or the finance committee or whomever if they so choose. Right. And occasionally that happens. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, if I were interested in being a member of town meeting, 
if I wanted to be a part of that legislative body, wanted my neighbors and friends to vote for me, how, how do I get that done? What do I have That's to do? It's a relatively easy process. Um, you need 10 signatures to get your name on the ballot. Okay. Uh, some precincts, we don't even have enough to fill, so you may walk in with your 10 signatures. Okay. Other precincts, you might be just enough. There might be eight people running for eight spots. Sometimes in one, some of the more politically active uh, sections of town, right. you might have 12 or 13. Sure. Sometimes it would take two or three tries. Right. But if you really want to be on, you're going to get on. And you don't, it's not, there's not a lot of campaigning. <laughs> a few people will make calls and so forth, sure. but I would say most people don't. They put their name on the ballot and see what happens. And see what happens. So what is the process of getting my name on the ballot? Do I have to register somewhere? Or? You, you go to the town hall, to the uh, town clerk's office, and get uh, nomination papers. This year they will be available on November 16th. Oh, so that that's, that's different from normal. That's different from normal because we have a, um, a provision in our bylaws that the selectmen can change the date of the election if we're having a, uh, a national primary okay. uh, sometime within a month or two okay. when the, the uh, okay. election would be taking place. That's what's happening this year. Sure. So instead of uh, early April or late March, it's going to be, the election will be March 1st. So the elect selectmen made that decision as a cost-saving measure primarily for the election. Correct, right. Also it, it gets more people It gets vote. more people out, right, yeah. right. So, so, I, so, I, so sorry, I, I interrupted you there. No. So, so I get some, I get an application or whatever from right. town hall. You get a form that's all, it's a pre-printed form. You have okay. to sign your name on the top telling what office you're running for. In this case, it's town meeting town member. Meeting, yep. And then you go out and get your 10 signatures. And right. you've got plenty of time because sure. th the papers don't have to be back until January uh, 12th, I think it is. All right, so, so you've, you've got almost over two months, well, almost two months. Almost, almost two, two months. months to get 10 signatures. Certainly you can talk to 10 of your neighbors in Right, right, and you may, you may get three or four in your own household. Yeah, well, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Do they have to be registered voters? They have to be registered voters. And in so the to town, be a member yes. of town meeting, you also have to be a registered Correct. voter? Correct, yes. Okay, so I'm a registered voter, let's say. I go to, get, I go to town hall, I get the, the piece of paper. Um, I get 10 signatures from my neighbors, friends who live in my precinct, though. It has to be people who live in my Within your precinct, you're right, correct, precinct. yes. I return those papers to town hall, and my name gets on the ballot. And the name is on the ballot. I would advise getting a few more than 10, because okay. every once in a while a name might be crossed off. The person thought he or she was registered and is not, or okay. it, isn't, it isn't written the way the town hall has you recorded. Okay. So if you get 10, if you got 15, I'm sure you'd be safe. Sure, sure, sure. And this year, I probably would, you know, you can invite your friends over for a holiday dessert, That's go right. ahead and collect a few signatures. That's great. I'm sure you could probably time. get it done in 10, or 15, 10 minutes or so, right. yes. What do you think some of the benefits are for a person uh, participating as a member of town meeting? Well, uh, one big one is you have a direct say in how your town's operated. You have a direct say in how the money is spent right. or, or whether or not you're going to have candy stores on the corner. <laughs> on the corner, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another uh, huge benefit is you get to know how the town runs. Okay. This is truly a government by the people and for the people. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not them running the town, it's you running the town, or your neighbors, or friends, or all of you. Right, right, right. So it's really uh, a way to participate in government without having to run a massive campaign and all that right. kind of thing. Right. Another thing I would point out is it's not, it, it's an important position, don't get me wrong, a very important position, yeah. but it's not heavy lifting. The legislature, of course, meets all year long. Right. Uh, cities generally meet every other week, the city councils, which is the rough equivalent of a town sure, meeting. Sure. They meet maybe 26 times a year every other right, week. Right. A town meeting doesn't meet nearly that so, much. So what is the commitment someone would be making well, if they wanted to run a town Well, we have meeting? two general meetings a year. And when I say a meeting, the meeting might last two to three nights. Right. But uh, the annual, the so-called annual meeting in April generally goes from two to four nights, and that's it. Mm -hmm. In the fall, in November, we have a second one called the subsequent meeting. Okay. That's generally one to two nights. And on average, since I've been moderator anyway, we've averaged between one and two special meetings a year. And okay. they almost always a one night. Okay. So we're talking about a commitment maybe three to seven nights over the entire over, year. Over an entire year. So it's, it is really designed so that a typical person you know, in my neighborhood, one of my friends or myself could actually just do it. And it's designed not to be a heavy burden. That's right. We're all amateurs at this. We're right. there. Uh, nobody's getting paid in the town meeting. And it's a, it's a way to allow the average person to be part of it and use his or her common sense. Sure, sure. So for those people who, uh, who would uh, complain that they never seem to get what they want in town, or, or for those people who might say, you know, what are those people doing who are running the town? This is an opportunity for someone to be. To be one of those one people. One of those right, people. Exactly, you're right. <laughs> yeah. um, so you mentioned that some of the precincts don't often or don't always fill up with candidates on the ballot. What happens if 
there aren't enough candidates to fill the well, ballot. Well, often write-in candidates will uh, win. Okay. So if you have, say, five or six people running out of, of the eight positions, mm -hmm. if, you, uh, if you notice that there's an opening and you haven't gotten out your papers, sure. get three or four of your neighbors to vote for you. Right. And, uh, You'll you're probably in. get on. And it's a good way to, it's a, it's, I don't recommend it. I, I think it's much sure. easier. The traditional route is better. The traditional route is better. <laughs> but if, if that's the way it works, you're just as much a member as anybody that has gone out and gotten the signatures. And I've seen several people get elected that way the first time and are still there 15, 20 years wow. later. Wow, wow, because they have to be reelected every three years. Every that's three years, right. Okay. I, let me point one other thing out. Sure. Oftentimes during the year, people may resign for whatever reason or move out of town, mm -hmm. and you might have a couple of openings. So when every year at the ballot, in addition to the eight three-year terms, mm -hmm. there might be a couple of two-year or one-year terms as well, right. filling out the term of somebody right. else. Okay, so, so that could be another option for someone also, is running for one of the shorter terms if they wanted to try it out to try see it if out. it was right. for them yes. before making a three-year commitment to, right. or something like that. Um, and just finally, as we close up here, um, I just wanted to ask, is uh, could they show, just show up to town meeting without being a member, or is there? Yes, any, anybody can show up to town meeting. Um, the town bylaws give the right to non-members to okay. speak only after the members, of course, All have the had their are, chance. Sure. But it is, we've, we've had some hot and heavy issues where there are people that are not right. members have come, and as moderator, I try my best to make sure that they have their say as well. Sure. There is a, a provision in town meeting that Anybody can, it, there's a motion called moving the question, which is right. called in debate. Yep. It takes two thirds of the body to decide that. Mm -hmm. And if I know of non members that have been hoping to speak, sure. I will always inform the town meeting just before you right. do this, make sure you know that there are non members that would like to right, speak. Right. Just to be clear, though, those non members don't get to vote. They do not get to vote. Do, but they do, will be given the opportunity to speak to an yes. issue if they so chose. Right. All right, well, thank you for coming today, Alan, and well, sharing a little bit. And I guess, you know, part of our reason for doing this was just to encourage people in town, if they were interested in town government or just want to give it a try and see what's going on, town meeting is a good place to do that. It's a great place to start. So papers are available as of November 16th. November 16th. They need to be back by January 12th. Back by January 12th with. Probably back to the town hall. Yes. Pa back to town hall by January 12th. Probably with, they need 10, but probably 15 is probably I would better, recommend better 15 or so. All right, well, thank you for being on the show today, Alan, and kind of enlightening us a little bit about town meeting and how someone can get involved, and, and appreciate your coming down today. Great, thank you. All right, thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll be back in just one moment on Community Conversation here on RCTV. The only thing you can really do at the end of the day is compare a guy to his contemporaries. Right. It's hard to compare Brady to Terry Bradshaw. The game was different in the 70s than it is now. They've won something like 15 or 16 more games than any other team in the NFL yep. in that span of time. Luck looks like an NFL quarterback. I remember I called everyone I knew when they, when they uh, traded for Garnett. Um, that was just one of the most amazing things of my life. <laughs> if John Farrell could fix John Lester, then your pitching problem is partially solved. Kareem had that one unstoppable shot, the sky hook, and he milked it for, what, 35,000 <laughs> points or something like that. Just, again, versatility, Mr. Patriot. Yeah. If you needed something, he's going to get it done. I am to this show as Alec Baldwin is to SNL. So. <laughs> this is the infamous Jason Barrett that shoves uh, his glove yes. right into Alex Rodriguez's face. <laughs> Welcome back to Community Conversation. Up next, we have Bob Hayes, the president of the Reading Rotary Club. Well, hello, I'm here with uh, Bob Hayes, who is the president of the Reading Rotary Club. Nice to have you here today, Bob. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us on Community Conversation. My pleasure. So, I know one of the questions that people ask is they, they see Rotary and they've heard of Rotary, but they're not exactly sure what Rotary is. So maybe you could give us the couple minute description of exactly what the Rotary Club is. Well, basically, it's a service organization. Okay. Its credo or motto is service above self. It started back in 1905 by a gentleman in Chicago, and it's grown to over 1.2 million members today and 35,000 clubs globally. Its core value are of service above self basically evolves around six functions or focus of service, which include um, uh, peace and conflict resolution and prevention, mm -hmm. disease treatment and prevention, water and sanitation, 
maternal and child health, basic literacy, and local economic and community development. Um, from that, Rotary has got involved in many different programs. They call them Rotary Action Groups. Okay. The most famous one, of course, is the eradication of polio. Right. Polio back in the 1950s used to afflict one person every day. Mm. Um, and now it's down to less than 100 known cases of Rotary globally. There's only two countries, uh, Nigeria being the last one that, um, of the three, there was Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Nigeria. This past July, Nigeria just made its first complete year without one new case of polio. And the last two are the, gonna be the toughest nuts to, to cut, so to speak, but sure. they're, um, um, Rotary has uh, contributed over $9 billion through philanthropic contributions, mm -hmm. 340 or $50 million from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Okay. And that's their, their, their major um, fame, if you will, but they're, they're a service organization that has basically, it's uh, aside from service above self, their the desire is to good in the world every day somewhere. Okay, so so Reading is just the Reading Club is just one of many clubs. It's an international organization, correct? Correct. Most towns have one. Some towns have two. Okay. They may have a breakfast Rotary Club plus a lunch lunch and Rotary Club. Okay. Um, not everybody can make Rotary at you know noon on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, sure. Or whatever. Sure. Um, that's always been one of the um, challenges to get new members to join the club is to mm -hmm. you know make it. Accommodating, right? You know, make it flexible. Right. So, right. we're working on that. But yes, Rotary is one of many clubs. Many towns around us have Rotary clubs. We do a joint venture in February. Um, then actually, it's in March this year, called the Taste of Metro North. We do that okay. with the North Reading Club as an okay. example. Sure. Um, Friends Forever, which is a a national global initiative to get children from areas of conflict together to to learn to respect and tolerate and become educated about cultures they don't necessarily understand. Sure. And we, along with so so Saugus and Wakefield, contribute to that. So okay. um, it, it, it's um, quite a, an amazing organization when you, when you start to understand and see what it does. Sure. So when we talk about the, the local club, what are some of the uh, activities or initiatives that you have done in Reading, say, in the last couple of years to help uh, meet the mission of, 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 of Rotary? Well, one of the things that we do that I personally get a great deal of satisfaction out of is we work very closely with the town through this adopt a family program. Oh, okay, yeah. And the Tuesday before Thanksgiving and before Christmas, we have a, a facility at the Reading DPW where we collect contributions from adoptive families mm -hmm. for families that are in need. And sure. we've got over 60 families in the program this year. So on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, we'll pass out a nice Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. And on the Tuesday before Christmas, we'll pass out both the fixings for a nice dinner as well as some items on wish lists the kids right. in those family get to put together for us. Yeah, um, and what I understand is those items are actually directed by the family. In other words, the family says these are the kind of the things that the kids would like or what have you, and then you get absolutely. people to kind of help out with that. Or, right. We, yeah. we, we want to make sure that we're not giving inappropriate gifts sure, or gifts that won't be of any value to the child. Right. And that's really what it's intended to do. It's not necessarily, you know, go out and buy a $400 surfing board or right. a <laughs> levitation board for a child. That's not the point of it. But we want to make sure they get things they want to, sure. they want to use. Sure, sure. So, so along with Adopt to the Family, uh, what are some of the other initiatives are in, in the local area um, that you've worked with? We have donated things like a van to Sanborn, Peter Sanborn okay. Center, for helping them get people around town, uh, elderly people. Um, Sounds kind of strange. We bought a golf cart for the for the Reading Band. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Um, we have recently taken over an initiative that, um, for many many years, the Booster Club did a very good job running the snack shack right. at the high school field, and um, unfortunately that that group I believe is um, disbanded. Okay. And the opportunity came up to run that shack and take responsibility for it and. We have done, I think, nine events this year so far. Okay. We've got a couple left. Of course, Thanksgiving is the big morning, the big sure. rivalry between sure. Stoneham and Reading. <laughs> and um, it's been fun. It's been a real education for us. It's, it's been a whole different kind of thought, um, mindset, if you will, for the Rotarians in Reading. But 
I think by and large it's been very successful. I think people have enjoyed it. It's a fun time. Mm -hmm. um, and as we're always looking for volunteers, <laughs> <laughs> plug. <laughs> but um, it's a good time, and, and because we support, we have a, uh, I'm also in the donation committee at, at Reading Rotary, we probably have 35 or 40 organizations and initiatives that we support financially. Okay. And we raise over $40,000 a year, and we distribute that money, mm -hmm. we put it right back into the community. Sure, sure. And it's it's um, it's not to say that we're all about just raising money. Um, the service above self is an important component. We also go to my brother's table in Lynn, oh, yeah. and we go to Rosie's place in Boston, yep. and we help in Rosie's place. We buy in, prepare the meal, and serve it. Mm -hmm. At my brother's table, we just help serve it. Mm -hmm. um, there's the interact group at Reading High School. They are very active with us. That and we do the field day, the uh, family day and town day in Reading. Oh yeah, um, dunk tanks and right. <laughs> cotton candy and things like that, you know, but sure. it's all to help us have a presence in the community as well as, you know, um, raise a little bit of money to, sure. you know, help help supplement what we do in our big auction, which is coming up in November. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but uh, I wanted to uh, ask you, if someone were interested in getting involved with Rotary, how would they do that? What would they have to do? Go to our website. Okay. Um, uh, ReadingRotaryMA.org. And it um, will give you contact information and okay. applications that can be downloaded and filled out. Or uh, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Sure. Um, and uh, I'll gladly you know give you my cell phone number seven eight one two five four one one four five. Okay. <laughs> um, I will gladly talk to anybody that's interested in joining Rotary. It's really a great organization. Sure. So, so uh, is it just a matter of just showing up to a meeting, or, or is there anything else involved with, with uh, joining? Um, well, it's, it's, there's a small vetting process. We just want to make sure that you understand what the prospective member understands what Rotary would like from them, mm -hmm. and to make sure that they're going to get from Rotary what's important to them. Sure. Um, uh, the service above self component is really an opportunity that may otherwise not present itself for people to join an organization that right. just does a lot of good. Right. And there are so many projects that we're involved in, there's certainly something that, that a, a new member could do that would right. be of interest to them. Right, absolutely. Even if it's not their, their you know, main focus or, sure. or priority, it, it's certainly there's something that would overlap a bit. You know. Right. And allow them to feel fulfilled and you know, give a piece of themselves to something that was beneficial to the community. Sure. So you've talked about uh, the Adopt a Family program. You've talked about the van for Peter Sanborn Place and running the Snack Shack and a couple of other things. But you did mention that there is an auction coming up in, in, in November. Tell us a little bit, a bit about that. Well, for the, this is the 16th year. Rotary's had an auction. It uh, used to be in the spring. We've held it at various places. This year, again, it'll be held at the Hillview. Okay. And it's going to be November 20th. Um, we've had it in September and October. In the past few years, it was known as Oktoberfest. This year, it's just our fall auction because we missed that window of opportunity. <laughs> so we had to re kind of rename it a little bit. But um, I don't know. November Fest sounds like you know name. November <laughs> Fest. Um, I I was good with it all, but it's 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 our fall auction. Right. And. That's our, that's our main fundraiser of the year. Mm -hmm. This is a very important fundraiser for us. Um, um, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty affordable. It's $30 a person, okay. table of 10 for 250 bucks. Okay. Um, lots of great auction items. We have live auction and silent auction items. All right. Plus we have some baskets of chance that, um, um, spirits baskets and sure. rainy day baskets and things like that. And, um, it, it's it's a good time. We typically get oh, 150, 60, 70 people in that ballpark, right, sometimes 200 people, and it's a good time. And yeah. and for the admission, you get a nice dinner, and um, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. So so the money that's raised will go towards any specific project this year, or well, that list of 40. Okay. That that the 40 or so different initiatives that we support. Right. right. Um, a lot of the money that we raise goes to the Reading Education Fund. Okay. Um, that's important to us. We're, we're doing some new work. I'm also on the board for the Reading Engineering Team, which is the LEGO Robotics. Oh, yeah, right, right. That's a great, great program, by the mm -hmm. way. Um, these kids do phenomenal stuff. Sure. 
So we're very proud to be part of that. And, um, you know, just that's, it's, it's, it's a component to our, it, it, it's a necessary sure. component to our, our, our mission really is to raise money to help all these organizations. Sure, absolutely. Can you give us a sneak peek on any of the items that might be auctioned off at the uh, auction on the November Well, 20th? there's always some very cool stuff. I know that if anybody likes to, uh, <laughs> well, there's a pheasant hunt going down in uh, Rhode Island. It's a, okay. it's a beautiful hunt on a nice 900 acre estate down there. Um, there's always some trips available and mm -hmm. some stays in various condos that mm -hmm. somebody might like to stay. Um, there, you know, it could be anywhere from Florida to Cape Cod to sure. South Carolina. So um, it changes. The, the live auction items change. The Obviously. silent auction items are the... I just didn't know if there was any sneak peeks on something that might be of interest this year. I mean, pheasant hunt sounds kind of interesting. <laughs> well, if, 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 you like, if you like that sort of thing, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful private estate, and yeah. it's very well managed, and it's completely... Um, you, you have a guide the entire time. Right. It's right. three complete novices or experts. But um, it's... it's um, one of many things we do, and of course, we have uh, two gentlemen that have been in the club for many, many years, um, Steve Chuhire and John Douglas, who act as the MCs and the auctioneers, and, and they do a great sure. give and take on each other, and it's a pretty entertaining component. Well, it sounds like a fun evening. So it's, if they want information, if people want information about the auction, they can also go to your website. That's which correct. Is readingrotary.com or Correct. Well, ReadingRotary.com. All right, great. Well, thank you for being here today, and thank you for sharing with us a little bit about what Rotary is all about. My pleasure. And uh, we look forward to finding out what's in the auction and all, all that uh, Rotary is going to do in town over the next year. And we thank you for watching. We'll be back in just one moment to hear our community conversation on RCTV. Well, that's it for this episode of Community Conversation. Thank you to Alan Folds and Bob Hayes for joining us here in studio. Be sure to look for our next episode coming up soon. Have a great day.